So what is the plan for yours truly if I can't get Travis Kelsey in the first round of 2023 fantasy football drafts? All right, this is the Fantasy Sports Boss. Make sure you hit that subscribe and that notification button if you're new to the channel. As I say at the start of every video, uh, season's quickly approaching. Make sure you get my 2023 Fantasy Football Draft Guide available for sale in book form on Amazon. Also, I believe Barnes & Noble as well. And then you can get the PDF version on the channel homepage uh, using the Buy Now link. So... As far as Kelsey is concerned, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. You all know that on my personal big board, Kelsey is number one over Justin Jefferson, over Jamar Chase uh, for 2023 fantasy football. For all the reasons I've spoken about in the past, I'm not going to go over it again. Just find any video that I've talked about Kelsey in the last you know, six months and it'll be there for you. Uh, so I have no issue using a first round pick on Kelsey this season. Um, the numbers are going to be uh, amazing once again, especially, you know, Juju Smith-Schuster no longer in town, uh, Macaulay Harbin no longer in town. They have some very young, raw receivers that are, you know, they, the hope is that they will step up. But it's going to be the Kelsey show once again this season, a lot of uh, big-time numbers coming from that. However, if, if I don't wind up with Kelsey in the first round, I'm going to have to pivot like everybody else who has the same plan as I do. And if you look at the tight end position, uh, it's very, <coughs> excuse me, it's very interesting once you get past Kelsey, that next tier is a very interchangeable, difficult to balance rank tier. You have Mark Andrews, George Kittle, TJ Hawkinson in that next tier. And a case could be made to rank any of those guys ahead of the other. George Kittle had 11 touchdowns last season. TJ Hawkinson had the most receptions out of all of them. Uh, Mark Andrews, you know, two seasons ago had an absolute monster blockbuster campaign that had him going ahead of Kelsey uh, in some drafts prior to last season. So those three guys are in that next tier. Um, but again, since it's difficult to determine who should go ahead of the other, your best bet there is to take the cheapest of the three. So if Andrews and Kittle uh, wind up going, then you take Hawkinson. Uh, if it's Kittle, Hawkinson, you take Andrews. You know, the, the, all three of them, I think, are going to be within this, uh, the ballpark of one another in terms of numbers. The thing with Kittle, while he had the most touchdowns, is he's the most injury prone. Does never plays a full season, so you got to take that into consideration. And Hawkinson and Andrews have much more competition now for targets. You know, the Ravens brought in Odell Beckham Jr. Um, uh, both teams brought in. Uh, wide receivers. You have Justin Jefferson, the alpha male in Minnesota. So um, they they could see, a, uh, at least definitely with Hawkinson, could see a decrease in numbers as well. However, when you get past that second tier, that's when things get interesting to me. So um, two guys in particular I really like. I, I, I really like Darren Waller this year. And I'm not just saying that because I'm a Giants fan, but he is, other than Kelsey, the only tight end in fantasy football, really, who's the no clear-cut number one target in his offense. They traded for Waller uh, for a reason. He's got two 90-plus catch seasons. I know the last couple of years have been filled with injuries, but he is a true... Um, you know, uh, 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 an amazing athlete for a tight end. That's what I was trying to say. He's a matchup nightmare for, uh, at the tight end position. And in a Brian Dable offense, he's going to get a ton of uh, targets from Daniel Jones this season. So my, right off the bat, I say, if I don't get Kelsey, I'm going to let Andrews go. I'm going to let Kittle go. I'm going to let Hawkinson go. And then I'm going to go take Darren Waller, who's going to have a depressed draft price because he's burned a lot of people the last couple of years. Beyond that, Evan Engram is somebody I do like a lot. He had a fantastic year last year, but I am concerned about Calvin Ridley joining Zay Jones, joining Christian Kirk, joining T um, um, Travis Etienne out of the backfield, and there's a lot of targets up uh, that are going to be distributed among those guys. So I think Engram will see a jog back in numbers as well, and I can't see Engram staying healthy for a second year in a row like he did last year. Constant injuries throughout his Giants tenure. So I'm very leery about Engram. However, Pat Freyermuth, all right, Freyermuth, Freyermuth, however you want to call it, um, 63 catches, 732 yards last season. This guy is extremely affordable, and, and he's very productive. He, You know, you could just plug him in and not and not look back. He's got a second-year quarterback who's going to pepper uh, his tight end as a safety valve. So Pat Freyermuth, to me, looks like a good value. Dalton Schultz with a rookie quarterback in C.J. Stroud. Uh, and with the Texans, and we all know Schultz is a tr uh, terrific red zone um, touchdown uh, tight end. So I'm I'm in on Schultz again this season. Dallas Goddard, I'm out on. Um, you know, I'm not taking anything away from him, but this is a, uh, a, a a passing tree that's led by AJ Brown and Devontae Smith, and then you have a quarterback who likes to keep uh, keep the ball around the goal line. And there's injury issues with Goddard as well. Um, and then beyond that, you're really just looking at Tyler Higby, Cole Komet, David Njoku. You can interchange all of those guys. Zach Ertz coming off an ACL is mildly interesting to me. 
Taysom Hill is not going to be Taysom Hill last season when he already was very inconsistent, but he had those smash weeks um, with, you know, Derek Carr in town. Now they're not going to need him to be under center as much. They really needed him for offense because everybody was hurt. They had no quarterback play. That's not going to be the case this year. I think Hill's going to be phased out a little bit more this year. And then Gerald Everett, I'm not interested in. So to rehash, it's Travis Kelsey right off the bat. If I don't get him, I'm going to let Andrews, Kittle, and Hawkinson go unless they really fall, you know, to, to a cheap price. And then I'm going to look at Darren Waller. I'm going to look at Pat Fryermuth. I'm going to look at Dalton Schultz. One of those four guys are going to be my tight end this season. And again, you know, Andrews, Kittle, Hawkinson, if the third of those three guys fall to the fourth round or fifth round, maybe I'll take a stab there, uh, especially in the fifth round. Andrews won't make it that far. Uh, Kittle and Hawkinson, it could be close. I think they're both fourth round guys. But, you know, I would maybe consider the cheapest of those three, but it's going to be Kelsey. Failing that, I'm going to go Waller. Failing that, then I'm going to just wait and do, go uh, Schultz and Firemuth. And that's how I'm going to handle the tight end position. All right, hit that subscribe, hit the notification button, guys. More videos on the way soon.